Just the other night, I watched an old man torture one of the best teams in the NBA. I've seen him do it a million times. This behavior should be to no surprise. And yet it is. Because LeBron James in his 21st season is still one of the best basketball players on the face of the planet. In the largest comeback of his entire career, LeBron James scored 19 points in six minutes and either scored or assisted on 30 of the Lakers' 39 fourth quarter points, eviscerating the Clippers in the process. Prancing down the court, tongue out, torturing a Clippers crowd. They can't believe what they're witnessing. And neither could I. A masterpiece of a performance by the old geezer. But LeBron has been excellent in the fourth quarter all season. In fact, here's a chart of every player this season and their scoring in the fourth quarter. The further right they are, the more efficient they have been in the fourth. The higher up they are, the more they are scoring in the fourth. Over 500 players who have logged minutes this NBA season. Here's Jalen McDaniels. He should probably pass the rock late in these games. Here's Derek Lively. He should probably shoot more in the fourth. Jonathan Kaminga has been great late in games this season. And then there's Jordan Poole, who shouldn't be anywhere near a basketball in the fourth quarter. But way up this chart, you'll find the best fourth quarter scoring threats in the league. Guys like Tatum, Durant, Steph, Luka, and the best fourth quarter scorer in the NBA this season, Giannis Antetokounmpo, with a sizable gap on everyone else. Except LeBron James, the oldest player in the NBA and still one of the best players on the planet. We need to talk about this. Today's video is sponsored by SeatGeek. The NBA season is in full swing, the MLB season is just around the corner, your favorite artists are on tour, and y'all are gonna need some tickets. Now you guys have used my promo code so much that SeatGeek wanted to hook you up with a new promo and a new special offer, and it's the best one yet. For the rest of the season, everyone who uses code JIMMY10 will get 10% off any tickets on SeatGeek. Whether you're new to the app or you've been using it for years like me, code JIMMY10 is good for 10% off any order on SeatGeek. Just get into the app, find the best tickets for you by using their color-coded seating map, punch in the promo code, and you're done. Take advantage of this deal while it's still around. Download the SeatGeek app and use code JIMMY10 for 10% off any order. With all the young talent booming in the NBA today, it's always nice to see old guys thriving on any given night. A vintage Steph performance, a barrage of mid-range jumpers from KD, Kyle Lowry coming off the bench to stink it up for 25 minutes. And over time, you get used to stuff like this. You see it enough times and it all becomes pretty normal at a certain point. However, this, under no circumstance, is normal. 34, 8, and 6 on 80% true shooting and 19 points in the fourth quarter to finish off a 21-point comeback? <laughs> I think I'm going to be sick. This man is old enough to be someone's grandfather, and he's doing this to Kawhi and the boys. Even crazier, according to the game score metric, this wasn't nearly his best game of the season. So while everyone else continues to make light of what this man is doing this season, I'm gonna show you exactly how unbelievable LeBron has been in his 21st season over the last 53 games. Now, there really isn't any precedence to what LeBron is doing because there have only been six other players who even played 21 seasons in the NBA. Here are those players and their averages in their 21st season. Really, just making it this far into your career is a miracle, but not for LeBron. Oh wait, these are LeBron's stats in the fourth quarter this season. His actual stat line is nearly equivalent to all of these other players in their 21st seasons combined. Now, as I mentioned before, as heroic as LeBron's performance against the Clippers was, statistically, it wasn't even his best game of the season. His best game this year was against the Thunder, where he earned himself a game score of 39.4, a game where he went for 40, 7, and 7 on 84% true shooting. Now, it goes without saying that LeBron is the only player to ever have a performance like this for a guy in their 21st season. But there has been a few other games of this caliber from players in their 20th season. Three other games to be exact. And they were all from LeBron as well. He's also the only player to have a performance like this in their 19th season in the league, 
and 18th season. In fact, here's a list of the only games in NBA history that were better than LeBron's 40-point night against the Thunder from players at least 15 seasons into their career. It's LeBron, LeBron, more LeBron, oh look, there's Paul Pierce, and more LeBron, a 47-piece from Kobe, and more LeBron, Steph's 60 bomb from this season, and LeBron. And that's it. As far as old man records go, LeBron's pretty much got every single one. Right now, LeBron is averaging 25, 8, and 7 a game on 61% true shooting, which at this point is just another season for him. But 21 years in, and there's no reason why or how a player should be putting up these numbers. Prior to this year, there have only been four players in NBA history who have averaged these numbers in a season. Michael Jordan, Nikola Jokic, James Harden, and LeBron. But here's the difference. When Jordan did it, he won the MVP. The two times Jokic did it, he won the MVP. And when Harden did it, he came in second in MVP voting. LeBron not only missed out on the award when he put up this stat line in the past, he's not even within the top 15 on the NBA's MVP leaderboard this season. Which is not only a testament to how great players have gotten over the last decade, but also how accustomed we have grown to these numbers from LeBron. But despite the consistency in his numbers, LeBron continues to adapt and evolve his game. Even after all these years, the game has changed immensely, and his game has changed with it. There's new players, new schemes and play styles driven by data that resembles nothing of the league he entered 21 years ago. New one-off unicorns and guys with freakish abilities and skill sets. And yet, it's LeBron, in his 21st season, who still remains a one-of-one. One. Here is a chart tracking LeBron's three-point percentage throughout his career starting his career at an abysmal 29% from three and somehow peaking this season in year 21 at 41%. But here's where it gets even crazier. Here are LeBron's three-point attempts per game over his career. So he's not only shooting better from long range this season than he ever has in his career, he's also shooting more threes than he did for the majority of his career. In fact, this season, LeBron is one of just 14 players who is attempting at least 5.5 threes a game and shooting at least 40% from long range, essentially making the 6 foot 9 inch 250 pound power forward one of the league's most valuable three point shooters. But LeBron is also one of just five players to attempt at least eight shots a game from within five feet of the basket while shooting at least 65% from that distance, making him one of the best interior scorers in the league as well. These two ends of the scoring spectrum do not mix. Players are either in one category or they're in the other, but LeBron has found a way to sneak into both. Now, here are those same 13 three-point shooters and where they land on a graph of league-wide three-point shooting. And here are those four other interior scorers who land on a graph of interior scoring. And here is where they don't mix. Players who can shoot threes can't really score inside. And players who can score inside can't shoot worth a lick. And then there's LeBron, literally the only player in the league who can do both at an elite clip as the oldest player in the NBA. But again, this might be surprising if we haven't come to expect this from LeBron. Did you know that LeBron is the only player in NBA history to be listed as a point guard, shooting guard, small forward, power forward, and center? And when I say listed, I don't just mean that was the formal position given to him. I mean he started and played the majority of his minutes at every single position for at least one season of his career. In today's positionless league, you would think this is far more common than before, but LeBron remains the only player to not only possess this range of skill set and size, but he's the only player to do it at an ultra elite level, earning all NBA honors at all five positions throughout his career. It's safe to say the torch has been passed down to younger talent around the league, players who can put up video game numbers on a nightly basis. I don't think anyone would argue that LeBron is playing at the level of Jokic or Shea or Luka right now, but there's something about watching LeBron cook up hardwood classics and stack up monster stat lines at this stage in his career that really puts a smile on my face. If LeBron doesn't get any nods this season for the MVP award, I'm sure he'll be just fine. 
At this point, it almost feels like everything he does is just icing on the cake. Like an extra scene after the credits of a movie. You thought the thing was over 20 minutes ago, and yet there you are, still in your seat, getting more than you ever expected. But I think there's one metric that really demonstrates LeBron's impact even in year 21 of his NBA career. Estimated wins is a metric derived from the estimated plus minus stat. Estimated wins tracks how well a player is playing and converts their efforts on the court into a number equal to the amount of wins a player has contributed to their team in any given season. In other words, how many wins has a player contributed to their team's total? And here is a graph of estimated wins from every single player this NBA season. Now, at the bottom are players who are essentially a net negative to their team, hence why they have a negative estimated wins. In fact, you have to climb to the 308th spot just to find a player who has a positive addition to their team's wins. Keep climbing and you'll start to find players who play considerable minutes every single game, like Terrence Mann, Cam Thomas, Anthony Simons. We're nearing the top 100 and already you'll start to find some really quality players here. Bradley Beal, LaMelo Ball, Cade Cunningham, RJ Barrett. But you'll have to go a lot further to find consistent star caliber players. Scotty Barnes lands at the 30th spot with 7.2 estimated wins. Victor Wembanyama is already 28th in this metric with 7.3 estimated wins. Here's Fox and Sabonis, Steph, Mitchell, Edwards, Tatum, and the top five players in the league this season according to this metric. Brunson, Jokic, Luka, Giannis, and Shea Gilgis Alexander. So where exactly does LeBron land? He's right here. Ranked fifth among all players this season when it comes to estimated wins contributed to their team. Essentially, the fifth most valuable player in the NBA as an old man in his 21st season.